Mmm, let's be honest, who doesn't like cake? If you're time poor though, or a little bit lazy like me, then you probably head down to your local bakery to enjoy this sweet treat. However, if you have the time, patience, and a little bit of skills, then nothing beats baking and eating your own homemade cake. Most people, even lazy people like me, know how to make a cake. You first need a recipe, then some ingredients, and finally a few basic skills and tools. But this video isn't about making a cake, it's about protein production. So what do you need to make a protein? Where in a cell is a recipe for protein stored? What ingredients do you need to make a protein? And where in a cell does protein production take place? To answer these questions, I'll spend the rest of the video comparing the step-by-step -step process of making a cake, which is something that you're probably all familiar with, with the step-by-step -step process of making a protein. But first, why should we even care about protein production? Well, no cellular functions in our body would be possible without proteins. For example, earlier this week, you learnt about plasma membrane proteins. These proteins help to move material into and out of a cell. Proteins inside of the cytoplasm in lysosomes also help to digest or break down microbes in old and damaged worn out organelles. In addition, proteins outside of a cell are also really important. For example, collagen in our skin gives our skin its strength and flexibility. Also, growth hormone is a special type of protein that builds bone and muscle mass. So understanding how protein production occurs is vitally important. But enough with explaining why proteins are important, let's spend the rest of this video comparing the process of protein production with the process of making a cake. To make a cake, you first need instructions or a recipe. You can find recipes in a recipe book, the internet, or in your mum's brain if you ask her nicely enough. Hi mum. To make a protein, you also need instructions. These instructions are stored in DNA in the nucleus. When I want to make a cake, I usually write the recipe on a sheet of paper so that I have my own copy of the recipe. Similarly, during protein production, the instructions for making a protein are copied or transcribed from DNA onto a molecule called messenger RNA or mRNA. This process is called transcription. Before transcription can take place, the double-stranded DNA molecule must first separate into two single strands of DNA. Enzymes in the nucleus then read one of these single strands of DNA and assemble a matching strand of messenger RNA. To make a cake, I leave my mum's house, recipe in hand, bye mum, and travel home to my own kitchen. To make a protein, the messenger RNA molecule similarly leaves the nucleus via nuclear pores and travels to ribosomes in the cytoplasm. In my kitchen, I first carefully read the cake recipe to make sure that I have all of the ingredients and equipment that I need. In a cell, ribosomes read or translate the instructions in the messenger RNA. To make a cake, I collect all of the ingredients that I need, like flour, milk and eggs, then mix them together in a bowl and finally bake in an oven. To make a protein, a cell also has to gather all of the necessary ingredients. These ingredients are called amino acids. 
Amino acids are delivered to ribosomes by molecules called transfer RNA. Ribosomes know which amino acids to select because they've read the instructions for making a protein in the messenger RNA. Ribosomes then join the selected amino acids together to form a protein. And so the story of protein production is complete. Or is it? Sometimes we like to decorate our cakes with icing, chocolate and candles. This changes the final appearance of a cake. Similarly, in our cells, proteins are also modified after they're created. This changes the final appearance of a protein. This modification of proteins takes place in the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus can modify proteins in several different ways. It can fold proteins to give them a complex three-dimensional shape. It can add carbohydrates or sugar molecules to proteins. It can stabilize proteins by adding cross-linking bonds. And finally, it can package proteins into secretory vesicles if the proteins are going to be released from the cell. Modification of proteins in the Golgi apparatus is important because it makes proteins functional by activating or switching them on so that they can do their job. And that's the story of how proteins and cakes are made. Hopefully I've been able to show you how both of these processes are very similar. In summary, instructions are copied from DNA onto messenger RNA in the nucleus. This is called transcription. Messenger RNA then travels from the nucleus to ribosomes. And ribosomes read instructions in the messenger RNA and make proteins using amino acids. This is called translation. While I'm enjoying this cake, take some time to complete the knowledge test on protein production.